We are going to continue in our tutorial about installing an Apache server with PHP and MySQL. In my last tutorial, we did install Ubuntu. We have opened a port in our firewall to be able to use the FTP option to be able to transfer files and give commands to our Linux version from Windows. Even though we are not going to use the FTP in this tutorial, I showed you guys how to use it in the last tutorial and the principles are the same for this window if you compare it with the SSH window, this window. This window is connected to this Ubuntu version. So let us continue. Let's put this terminal here. Let me clear this screen. So the first thing that we're going to do is install the Apache server. So the way to install stuff on Linux is usually to write down sudo apt get install and then you say what you want to install. So we want to install Apache 2. Now it's telling us here, the following packages will be installed. So in, in order for us to use Apache 2, we need apparently all this stuff. And we press yes, enter. We wait and now it's installing it for us. Okay, so it's installed. If we would go to our explorer, we can go to our locations, our computer, and we will see here an ETC that Apache 2 has been installed. So this is an important folder. Let's put this folder, Apache 2 here as a bookmark just so we can go easily back to this folder here. So now we have Apache installed. That wasn't that hard, right? I don't know if it is running. Let us check. So sudo, oh, okay, I, I did it wrong. I, I did it the old way. So again, I want to know the status, but I need to ask it from etc if I'm correct. And then the init.d and then Apache 2. Okay, so that was what we needed. So we can see here that our Apache is running at the moment. So let's go to our web browser to check it out. If we go to our web browser and we type in localhost, we can see that our localhost is running. You see, if we would use 127.0.0.1, we would also get to our local. So this means localhost. Our localhost means this IP address. And what are we seeing right here? we are seeing a file in a folder. And as you can see here, it says it is located at ver www.htmlindex.html. Let's search for that folder. So we go to computer, we go to our ver, we go to www, and let's add this www to our bookmarks. Here, we are going to find the website. Here's the HTML file, and if we would open this with another application, view all applications, and let's use text editor. <laughs> The text editor, we will see the HTML file here. So, as you can see, this is the default welcome page. This is the default welcome page. And if we would change this in hi with a couple of exclamation marks, we say, oh, it's a read only file. Here we have a first problem. We cannot adjust it here. We can only adjust it if we have the right to adjust it. If you are in, in the Explorer window, right click and press open in terminal and you automatically get to this folder. So if you press LS for listing, we would see our HTML file here. Okay, so we see index.html. We can use nano, which is the standard text editor in the terminal window. Press sudo nano index and press tab to autofill it. You will need your password and we can get into this editor. In this editor, we can go down and change something. Let's call this the Apache Ubuntu server main page, just so we can see that it is working. And I wanted to say something here. Hi, I am working. And you press Ctrl plus X, and then it asks you to save it. And then you say, yes, I wanna save it. And now it is saved. If we go back here, and we refresh this page, we will see it is the Apache main server. Hi, I am working. <laughs> so now we know for sure that it is working, but can we already use this from our windows? So that's one of the main questions that you guys probably have. So let's close this window and let's try and go to the website in our windows. So we have to write down the IP address, 192.68.2.9, was it nine or was it eight? Nine, okay, and enter. Will it work? No, it does not work yet. 
So if my Windows computer cannot connect to Ubuntu, then outside world cannot connect to Ubuntu as well. So how do we fix this problem? So we go back to Ubuntu and we know that it is working on the local host, but we know that the other computers cannot connect to this PC. So we have to open a port for Apache and there is a way to open it. We, we did this before. So let's go to sudo ufw Ubuntu firewall. Let's first start with the app list. This app list, well, it, it is a autofill for an app. So we want to use Apache. So what we can do is sudo ufw, and then we're going to allow, and then quotation mark, and then let's do Apache full. Why full? Full gives you the ability to use SSL connections, which is port 443, something like that. So now the rule is added. So if we would ufw status, we will see that Apache full is allowed. And what does that mean? That port 80 is open to connect. And usually when something wants to connect, well, it's already here, you see? <laughs> so when I opened it, it was able to connect from Windows. So this is our Windows screen. So that means that locally, all the PCs can connect to port 80 of our Ubuntu. And that does not mean that the outside world can connect to it yet. In order for us to do that, to have the outside world be able to connect to this server, then we need to open the port and port forward the port from our router. We have to find our router. How do you do that? You gotta go to your Windows in this case. So go to your Windows, in Windows, go to start, press CMD for the command window, open the command window and type ipconfig. You will get this screen. You will see your own IP address of your Windows. So my Windows, this PC that is running the virtual machine is number two. And we can find here the default gateway and that is our local router. So let's go to this IP address in a browser, 192.168.2.254. And that will send you to your router, your local router. So this is my local router. You log in. Somewhere in your router, you will find something that would say applications. So with me, it's here, application. For you, it might be somewhere different. I don't know. Go to applications, search for port forwarding. That's the one. In port forwarding, you need to be able to forward port 80 to something. If we would check Apache 2, you will see we have a TCP port of 80 open and 443 and it's start and end and just make sure that it's only that port, not 81, not 82, just 80 and 443. This is for the SSL connection and this is for the normal connection. So if it is HTTP or it is HTTPS, which is a SSL connection. This needs to be open. So make sure that you have 80 and 443 and make sure that you forward it to the right IP address. So let's go back to port forwarding. Let's add this IP address, 192.168.2.9 is it, and let's add it. And now the outside world can connect to your page. So I have a website which is called Fortcoin Project. At the moment, I have this fartcoinproject.com sent to my IP address. My router tells us that whenever something comes in on port 80, which is HTTP, it will send it to the IP address of Ubuntu. How do you get this to work? You need to have a location where you have your DNS, as they call it. I have that at Trans IP, which is for me a uh, Dutch website, because I'm from the Netherlands, domain hosting. As you can see here, I have the domain fartcoinproject.com. This is probably the same for every domain name website. You have to put your IP address at type A for at whatever is here, Fartcoin Project, uh, you will get to this IP address. And this is my local IP address. So if I would search for my IP, it would tell me, so here is my IP, this is my local IP. I'm from the Netherlands, my IP here. And as you can see, I sent it to my IP. So if I would go to my IP now here, it will be sent here. So you guys get it? You buy a domain name. That domain name is registered to a IP address. That is how you connect it. So we have a Apache server running. So I hope you guys did learn something new today. I hope you guys now understand how you can connect the outside world to your Apache 2 server, to your virtual machine. I hope you now understand that you have to open the ports first before you are able to do this. We are going to continue in this, in this tutorial in the next video. If you did enjoy it, give it a big like. And if you are new to my channel, it would be so awesome if you would subscribe to my channel because I make these kinds of videos every once in a while. And in the next episode, we are going to continue making our PHP and MySQL server. So thank you guys for being here and see you guys next time.
let us open this file sudo nano and let me check for the last time we have a server name and the server name will be fartcoin project alias would be everything dot fartcoin project where the server admin is not important we can delete this we don't need it the document root is correct am i right yeah okay so now we have a good fartcoin configuration file so save it yes enter 